Look at this, still relevant. 20 years later and the news is still 90% bullshit. These college kids need to get pulled over just for listening to Papa Roach. Can someone please tell me what a poo butt ass is? Yeah, YouTube is all about smiles and cries too. I smile in front of the camera and I cry when no one watches it. Look at Snoop in a wheelchair rolling down the street. Come over here like you paid a rent, motherfucker. Look at Alonzo holding the strap sideways. You know he's gangster. Even Mendez. Damn, they got the holy trinity of Mexican actors for this scene. I didn't know butt loving was so common in the gangster world until this movie. I always hated Alonzo going out the way he does, but he definitely deserved it. Before I get started, I'd like to kindly ask that you hit the like button. Boom! <laughs> <laughs> You never know, that's the point. Go. And please subscribe to the channel for more content just like this. It's crazy to think that this year marks the 20th anniversary of Training Day's release. I was in my early teens when it was initially released, and I remember sitting down to watch it and being not quite sure what to expect. This could have been a generic police corruption story, like we've seen a million times before. But it was really so much more than that, and that's why it became essential viewing for me over the years. In typical Denzel form, he just elevates the material to make it something special. He has that power as an actor. Plus, as always, he's just so charismatic, and you just can't take your eyes off him whenever he's on screen. I'm sure the ladies say the same thing, but for very different reasons. You won't let me read it. So you entertain me with your bullshit. Tell me a story right now. Go. Training Day, for people that don't know, is about a veteran police officer named Alonzo, who is escorting the rookie Jake on his first day in the LAPD's inner city narcotics unit. Little does Jake know he's in for a little bit more than he signed up for. Watching the movie after you've seen it a couple million times the way I have, you really get to appreciate the way they set up Alonzo's plot to use Jake and eventually double cross him. And Denzel's Oscar worthy performance is a big part of that setup. If you're watching it for the first time, Alonzo may seem a bit mean at times. Yo, get the fuck up and just wait. But he's also very charming, so you kind of get sucked into it, much like Jake does in the movie. Initially, everything he puts Jake through is kind of just shrugged off as him testing him, no matter how unethical those tests may seem. Jesus Christ. Nah, man, I'm not losing my job. This is your job. I can't do that. Smoke it. Huh. This ain't a test, just take a hit. From the audience perspective, early in the movie, Alonzo may be operating on the fringe, but he's not quite crossed that line yet. Alonzo has become too entrenched in the streets that he's supposed to protect. They've basically consumed him. However, to Jake and to the audience, he kind of just comes off as this really knowledgeable cop who knows a lot about the area that they're operating in. My nigga. <laughs> Roll your window down, start there. <laughs> so you gotta hear the street, you gotta smell it, you know? You gotta taste that shit, feel it. Right. The movie just plays with your expectations in a really effective way, using the character of Alonzo. And the genius part is, is that they're dropping hints the whole time about who Alonzo actually is as a person. You're not completely sure who he is until he crosses that line completely and shoots Roger right in front of Jake. That is the point of no return for his character. You could say that this may have been his first time crossing the line in that manner because of the desperate situation that he's in and the fact that he needs to pay off the Russians. He even tries to spin it that that's just the way that their unit operates and this is the only way to keep drugs off the street. It, it can't be like this. It is this way, man. I'm sorry I exposed you to it, but it is. It's ugly, but it's necessary. In the end, however, we find out, much like Jake does, that he's doing this for very selfish reasons. Jake doesn't realize it until he's left in the hood and basically set up to be killed. You ever had your shit pushed in? A couple of things I thought of while watching this that I never really thought of before. How close exactly were Alonzo and Roger? Alonzo tells Jake that he was playing Roger the whole time and that's his job, but Roger has clearly known Alonzo for a very long time and he talks about when he was a rookie cop. So to me it just feels like Alonzo got so desperate that he just chose to off one of his friends in order to get ahead. I suppose that was done to just reinforce how ruthless his character is. The other thing I thought of is that if Jake took the money that Alonzo offered him, would that have changed Alonzo? Alonzo's plans at all? Like was Jake only set up to be killed after he refused the money because Alonzo just took that as he doesn't want to play ball? Or was Jake just always going to be killed whether he took the money or not? I personally think he was just going to be set up no matter what, but let me know what you think in the comments down below. I also have to mention I love how they set up how Jake's good deed earlier in the film essentially saves his life later in the film. There's a nice message about karma there, and I really dug that in this movie. I really love the final confrontation between Jake and Alonzo because it feels like it's been building this whole time and it just explodes on screen. And you just really want to see Jake take it to Alonzo, which he does. 
You don't deserve this. It's also really crazy to see a strong character like Alonzo break down when he loses control of the situation. Not to mention Denzel's monologue when the people of the jungle basically betray him and refuse to help him. Top 5 monologue of all time and I'd be willing to bet that a lot of it, if not all of it, was improvised. You think you can do this to me? You motherfuckers will be playing basketball in Pelican Bay when I get finished with you. Shoe program, nigga. Because it comes off like such a natural reaction when someone like him would be backed into a corner. He basically just starts lashing out. Ultimately, Alonzo gets what was coming to him, and that's usually what happens when you decide to fuck with the wrong people. I don't know how many people know this, but there's an alternate ending to this movie where the three wise men approach Jake about the money he took from Alonzo, and Jake tells them that he booked it in evidence, which is what you're supposed to do. I understand why the scene was cut out, but I did kind of like it because it basically just reinforces the fact that this corrupt will continue and that Alonzo was basically nothing more than a spoke on a wheel. I thought it was a nice little touch but I guess they wanted a little bit more of an optimistic ending. And once again the news is 90% bullshit because what do they do? They spin Alonzo's death to make it sound like he wasn't the crooked cop that he was. Overall I'm of the opinion that Training Day is Denzel Washington's best performance. King Kong ain't got shit on me! It also features a number of other actors putting on great performances as well. It's very gritty, it's very real, and you can't help but get sucked into this world. I think Training Day is a damn near perfect movie. It's rewatchable for days and supremely quotable. I haven't given out one of these ratings since I implemented my new rating system, but for me, Training Day is going to get my very first Bill and Ted. Excellent! So if you've seen Training Day, I'm sure you have. Let me know what you think about it in the comments down below. As always, please like, comment, share, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell for notifications, and I'll see you next time right here on Real Shift. Thanks for watching. Peace out. Y'all be cool. Right on.